I'm not afraid. Recording is on. Yeah, so uh, I guess welcome to um, the BizDev meeting of uh, the 9th of November, 2020. Um, this is my first time kind of like hosting the BizDev meeting, so congratulate me, yay. <laughs> um, yeah, um, so on the agenda, we don't have too many things. I think a lot of, this, a lot of it is gonna be kind of like discussion. Um, but I would like to start with like, um, maybe we could have a part of this call, like the, maybe the first few minutes to, uh, for new members to introduce themselves, uh, whether they're anonymous or not. Um, and then we, like today, we will follow up with um, uh, Colony. Um, Jack from Colony is here, I think. Uh, he could um, introduce maybe Colony, and uh, they are also looking to do an idea on Mesa. Um, a bit of talk about the DX swap uh, rebrand. Um, that that's planning and uh, about the X DX style deployment. Uh, so that's kind of on the agenda. Yeah, I didn't see the. Okay, chat doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> anyone uh, anyone wants to introduce themselves? I see a couple of new people here. I think Paul Makina. Wait, I mean you've been active in the forums. I don't know if you've introduced yourself or if you want to. And slow Chimera, maybe. Hi, I've only just come across this project. It looks quite interesting. I thought I'd listen in to the best dev meeting. All right, what does it say a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and I don't know, what you do? Um, I'm from Scotland. I um, do a lot of things around Ethereum. I'm currently trying to set up on the staking nodes. I do quite a bit of DeFi um, and just generally dabble. Nice. I think a lot of people here are dabblers. Um, Paul welcome. McKenna? Yeah. Well, welcome. Welcome to the Excel. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, Paul McKenna, do you want to introduce yourself or Bram? I don't know if Bram was here before. Hey, yeah. Uh, I'm Paul McKenna, um, active on the forums and DXD holder and wrap holder. Nice. Any background or? Uh, well, we're about to stay anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, and Bram? Yeah. 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 Yeah, maybe share about yourself, I guess, where you're from, if you want to. Um, and... Yeah, so, yeah, uh, but my brief background is that, you know, so I'm, uh, I'm a Singaporean, but currently I'm living in Russia. Uh, and yeah, about my technical background, uh, I'm full stack developer, mainly skilled at RegJS and QJS, uh, front and yeah, familiar with uh, deep development. You're using Web3JS, EDLJS, uh, and the South Graph. And also, I'm experienced uh, with authority and Truffle and OpenJapLin. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, that's awesome. Thanks, Bram. Yeah, so uh, I guess welcome, Bram, Pulp, and uh, Slow Chimera. And yeah, I guess we can move on to the next topic, which is um, Jack from Colony. Um, I can personally say that I've, I've, uh, like, I kind of discovered DAOs, um, and that was kind of like my bridge to Ethereum. Actually, was the DAO hack and. I looked at all the platforms back in the day, and yeah, um, Colony seemed like a promise, promising one. Um, and yeah, so glad to have you here. And yeah, I don't know, you have the stage. Thank you very much. It's very kind. It's uh, nice to be here. Nice to meet you guys. Um, 
I've obviously been aware of DXDAO for some time, but given the shortness of time and quite a lot of my plate dealing with Colony, uh, it's far, far too long it's taken me to, to get here and say hi to you all. And uh, it's been self-interest, sadly, that <laughs> brings me to that, which is uh, the interest in, uh, in Gnosis Protocol as a mechanism for issuing tokens, um, and Mesa as a particularly pleasant interface through which that can at least in part be done. Um, so I can talk a bit about Colony, if you'd like. Um, yeah. Yeah, cool. So um, Colony was, we were working on DAOs, I suppose, before we'd even heard the term DAOs. Uh, so we, we kind of got started really before, well, it was definitely before Ethereum mainnet went live. Um, so yeah, we've, we've been kind of working on this quite quietly for a long time and, and playing with various iterations of the product. Um, we're actually, although we don't make a lot of noise, the, the protocol is very far advanced now. Um, we wrote the Colony white paper back in 2017, I think it was, updated it um, earlier this year. And in terms of the functionality contained within the, the Colony network protocol, we're at around 80 to 90% complete of everything that's contained within the white paper. Um, which, which is a lot. Um, so we're really excited for that to go live onto mainnet and XDAI, which it will do uh, later this quarter. And in brief, it contains the ability to do um, various types of payments. In fact, we have a simple but flexible payment primitive, which we call expenditures, which allows you to do all sorts of different kinds of um, payments all through one contract. Um, everything from single transaction payment to um, being able to send batch transfers, to be able to do milestones, all sorts of things. Um, you can create teams in a colony, uh, and teams are structured as part of a larger organization. It can be a sort of hierarchical structure of teams wherein you have the entire organization, perhaps below which you have, let's say, for dev, product, marketing. And then within those, you could have, again, sub-teams. And each of those can control their own um, budgets. Um, we have, obviously, decision-making. Um, governance in Colony is, is a little bit different than it is in uh, other frameworks. We try to avoid voting where possible. Um, rather, it oper operates according to a system of lazy consensus in which decisions are presumed to have been already discussed and sort of informal consensus reached in a call like this before somebody creates an on-chain um, proposal, something we call a motion, to ratify that and cause whatever change has been proposed um, to actually take place. And it's really only if there's direct objection to that that you need to have a dispute. So we Im imagine that in most well-functioning organizations, it should be possible for most things to be able to happen without explicit voting all the time. Um, there is nevertheless uh, arbitration that can be done. And there's a system of escalation of that arbitration if things are unsatisfactory to any of the parties. Um, yeah, I could go on. There's lots to it. Um, our application is um, currently being radically reimagined. As I said, we've had a few different iterations of the product over time, um, poking into different potential markets. Um, but all based on the same underlying protocol. And we have a much better understanding of what users need now on the basis of those experiments that we've run in the past and uh, really excited to be pushing out the new version of the product um, at late December. Um, and then rapidly on the, uh, on, on the heels of that will come um, 
uh, more uh, in Q1 next year, which will really unleash a lot of the functionality I've just been talking about. Um, yeah, and, and in concert with that, in concert with the product actually going live, um, we want to issue a token. That's somewhat unusual um, in the Ethereum space to be issuing a token after you've built the product. But really what we want this public sale to do is to capitalize the meta colony. So all of the funds that we raise will immediately be under the decentralized governance of, of what we think is the most powerful um, governance framework that there is. So that's my TLDR. Welcome any questions or further discussion. I have a question. Hit me. It's just when on your website you have something called coin machine right yes mm -hmm. why uh, i'm guessing you, you want to use misa to raise the funds that's right coin machine is uh is a funding mechanism that we've developed it's a bit different it's really used for continuous fundraising we do intend to use that but we intend to use it as part of a longer strategy so we intend to use gnosis protocol to do basically a fixed period sale. And then at some point later to let coin machines start minting tokens to provide a continual sort of faucet for people to buy CLMY if they wish to. All right, thank you. Um, yeah, so uh, I mean, thank you. If anyone has any more questions, like feel free to interject. Um, I wanna ask about, um, yeah, so you guys are planning to do a token sale. You, you just mentioned that you want to do like a, a time, I guess, let's say a, a month or so of, of a sale. And then mm -hmm. do you sell like a specific amount of tokens or do you sell um, for a specific amount of time? Uh, that's I think kind of you, yeah, it could go either way. I would say that the, our decisions on the exact sale strategy are not yet completely defined. That's why... I was asking the other day what you guys have found um, works, well, you know, that there must be learnings that you, you have accrued, having had a few of these run now, and I'm really keen to learn what those are um, before we kind of commit to any particular course of action. I think it would be imprudent for us to do that. Um, one other thing I could do is I could just give you a, a quick whiz through what the interface looks like, if, if that would be of interest. Yeah. Yeah, sure. All right. Let's try not to make this take too long. I can I share Figma application window? All right. You got it? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. So if I can scale that up a bit. That looks better. Okay, I'll just give you kind of a very quick overview of what all of this means that you're looking at right now. This is basically the um, sort of landing page of of the colony in which currently nothing is happening. Can you see my pointer? Yeah, you can. So going from the top right. This is kind of the user's personal dashboard. And in the top right hand corner, it's the user's avatar. To the left, we've got the notification center in which they receive um, well, their, their notifications of the things that are salient to them. The address with which they're logged in, of course. The number of tokens that they have in this colony, that is to say, this colony's native token, which in our case is CLNY for the meta colony. Um, this red dot indicates that this person has got some inactive tokens. Tokens need to be activated if you want to do something with them. So this kind of is a little interface allowing you to activate or deactivate your tokens, which basically means depositing them to a contract which allows them to be locked when you need to stake them. Um, to the left of that, we've got the amount of reputation this person has in the, this colony and uh, the network to which it's connected. Then over to the left, the name and address, then all the colonies this person is connected to or is joined uh, a member of. Um, then 
on this left side here, this is kind of the main um, navigation through which you'll be able to access all of Colony's functionalities. Um, the ones that we'll have initially are actions, events, and extensions. Um, actions is kind of, well, really anything that you might need to interact with. We'll get onto that in a sec. Events is just really a list of everything that has happened in the colony, all of the transactions that have happened, irrespective of whether they took place in the application or on chain. They all get caught by this. That is to say, directly on chain without having gone through the, the app. And then extensions, if that works, that doesn't work, never mind. Um, these are the teams. In this version, it's actually called domains, but we're changing that to teams. So um, you'll be able to see, select the different teams that you want to look at or create a new team. Um, and then it gives you some additional information about that team on the right side. So the funds that is available to the, that team um, and then the members. If you click on one of these guys, you can see what their, their little mini profile is. So the reputation that they have, the tokens, any permissions that they may have in this doing. Then whilst there are some shortcuts around the place, like this one to manage funds, which allows you to go and manage the finances of the colony, um, really anything you'd want to do, you access via this universal action creator here. So this brings up a modal and allows you to navigate wherever you want to go, whatever you want to be able to do within this colony. So creating expenditures, making payments, doing tasks or building salaries. Um, in advance, we have things like managing the permissions or the recovery mode, which is basically like a panic button for your DAO where you can kind of shut it down and um, let it be started again by the community when whatever was going wrong has been fixed. I won't go into every one of these. I'll just show you a quick squeeze through what governance will look like in Colony. Do that by transferring some funds between domains. So here I'm gonna transfer some funds between product and dev and uh, you would just say how much you want to transfer and why you want to transfer them. Sign the transaction to send them. And then you would see the, uh, the, the page where this, where this motion is taking place. Um, everything that's, every motion needs to be staked and the state can be crowdsourced. So I now decide that I want to stake 25% of this um, apologies for the errors. We've just updated the typography and it's um, it's broken a lot of stuff. And now I, I've staked 25% of it and now I would just be waiting for somebody else to do the same, which this guy's come along and done. Now the motion is fully staked. Uh, we just have to wait for the motion to pass uh, unless somebody objects to it. And nobody's going to object to this one because this is in a well-running organization and uh, everybody knew that we'd agreed that this was going to happen. So nobody's going to object because they would just get, um, they would just lose that objection. And so when time fully passes, the motion has passed and may be finalized. Um, and so finalizing it is the, the transaction that actually causes these funds to be moved from the product team to the dev team. There you go, you finalize that on chain, and boom, it's done. Uh, if you claimed, if you if you put down the stake, you can then, once it's been finalized, you can claim your stake back. And everybody's happy. I'll just quickly, well, this one isn't so quick, but um, do you guys want me to stop or carry on and show you any more of this? I'll like say more, maybe. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll show you kind of the, this more adversarial scenario now, in which I find that there is this new motion here uh, to pay Luke some die. Um, 
So I go into this and find that he has created a motion to pay himself 5,000 die, uh, has fully staked it, and so he's really just hoping now that nobody's going to notice, uh, while assuming that it's something spurious, uh, he's hoping that nobody's going to notice until the timeout has, has complete. But I have noticed, and I don't agree with it, so I'm going to object. So I raise this objection and the transaction for that. And now I also need to stake it. So I'm also going to back it fully. So I know that this is some bullshit. Um, and now, because as it said here, stake, uh, um, it said, sorry, on the modal before, that once the objection is fully staked, the vote will start immediately. Um, so here it says in the event log down here, voting has started, voting is secret and waited by permission. Um, so voting in Colony has a few interesting attributes, uh, which we think are important. One of which is that voting is always secret. And we think that's, that's really important because in order to effectively aggregate collective intelligence, um, it, it seems to be the case that it's necessary for people to be operating on their own private knowledge and not unduly influenced by, by others. Um, so the vote operates according to what we call a partial lock commit reveal system, in which you commit your vote but and then reveal it with a subsequent transaction. So in this case, I'm going to vote no. Oh, and it's also weighted by the reputation that I have earned in this particular domain. So Jack, it hit me up. Sorry to interrupt, but does that mean no. it will be revealed uh, you know, at the reveal stage? People That's will right. know who, who voted for what. That's just correct. Until the reveal time. That's right. It would be really nice to have some ZK smart, Stark magic going on so that it was fully receipt free, but we don't have that yet. Although I hear that Barry White has done some sterling work on that, so maybe it's not too far away. Um, yeah, so so here uh, I have to reveal my vote. And sorry, I should have mentioned on the previous screen that, um, can I just go back to that? Yeah, there's there's a reward for, for voting. Um, and that would be, I think it's 20% of whatever the, the total state was, which would be divided between and the people proportional to their reputation. So if I vote on this, and then I reveal my vote, and in revealing my vote, I also claim my reward. So I'm revealing my vote as being no, getting this reward of 18.76 CLNY. And now I just need to wait for either the time timeout to complete or everybody to have revealed their votes. And now that has happened. Um, apologies for the change in screen layout. This is totally unprofessional of me. Um, but we can see that there is an outcome here. Um, and it's, it's a landslide in favor of no. But now there's an escalation period, which we won't get into. But basically, that means that if, for whatever reason, uh, Luke thinks that this was grossly unfair, and he really should have been able to claim this, he'd be able to escalate it to a higher domain. It would require him to stake more to do so, but he would be able to bring in more people to this dispute if he really wants to. Um, otherwise, the time will, 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 will pass, and um, we'll see in the event log, the motion has failed and may be finalized. So then we can just finalize this motion and there we are, it's all closed off. Nothing more will happen, except that me as the person who's staked um, on the objection, I've got a whole bunch of CLNY that I can, I, I get to claim as my reward, which I've, I've won from, from Luke as his, his motion having um, been found to be inappropriate. So I can just claim that, and you can see it appear in my wallet um, total up there. And that's it. All done. That's as much of a demo as I've got for you. You said that with the. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. Uh, with the fundraise, it would the funds raised would be controlled by the Meta Colony. That's right. That's right. Who who so who is that 
exactly how would that operate? That will be anybody who has reputation in the meta colony. I guess yeah. the follow-up question is how do you get reputation? I guess in the meta colony. I mean. And is it already established? No, it's not already established. No, it's it's a it's a new thing. Um, so people will earn their reputation by doing things like either doing work within the meta colony, or um, by um, doing reputation mining, which is our sort of layer two scaling solution that computes reputation updates uh, for everybody in the colony network. The reputation decays over time, so it needs to be um, it needs to be updated periodically. So would you say reputation then in colony is uh, a measure of your contributions? Yeah, exactly. And it, it, you're always the reason why it decays is to keep it contemporaneous to the efforts that everybody's put in at the time. So we kind of assume that it, it's likely that in a colony that sort of is doing well, its token should appreciate in value over time, uh, or at least it will be somewhat volatile. Um, and so it seems appropriate that those who participate and, and sort of contribute value early on, they're likely to get more tokens, which hopefully will be worth more over time. But you don't necessarily want them to always have more influence. It'd be better for people to have uh, an appropriate amount of influence going along based on how much work they do as they come and go, rather than finding that somebody can sort of leave very early on, but because tokens were peanuts at the time, they can come back later and start making trouble. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. I remember I remember looking at your decay formula like a long time ago, mm. which was um, pretty. Soon. I think it was like every week or so, or every day. Every day, actually, we yeah. we hope for it to be every hour. Yeah. Um, What's the reasoning for that? For the decay to be every hour, or just reputation decay in general? What what I just described, so that people's reputation. The amount of influence that people has normalizes over time to their contemporaneous contribution. You don't want to end up with a sort of aristocracy of, of influence. Right. <clears throat> well, I think it's interesting kind of from the financial perspective on that. I think that like kind of uh, has a more uh, intuitive sense of needing decay on that. And I, I think reputation, I can see it too uh, there uh, just for different different reasons, as you said. like. Mm. Uh, the hair, the aristocracy, aristocracy is a good comparison. Right. Yeah, I think in the case of let's say DX down and Dow stack, and um, here is uh, we're doing like sort of reputation inflation, mm. and then um, that kind of like works from the other way. Um, mm -hmm. I think that at the end of the day, it might look this. It might it might technically be the same, um, but. Uh, Let's say the the feeling is and, and that if you get your reputation decayed is totally different to right. that inflated, right? Uh, so yeah. Um, yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Is the is the goal of Meta Colony once it will have some funds is for that colony to actually oversee like the success and growth of Colony? Correct. Yes. So it's like we've kind of. Yeah. We've kind of um, incubated it ourselves, and we've been quiet about it, really. And um, but but now that it's done and should be governable itself, we want it to be able to do so. We we actually also think that's really important from a from a legal perspective, um, mm -hmm. because um, basically it's very hard for a token not to be considered a security unless it's decentrally governed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if that precedent really holds, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> yeah, I think this is kind of like the same thing with the XDAO. Um, mm. So yeah. Um, yeah, I, I guess, I don't know if we have time, but you know, you, you guys want to do an IDO possibly on Mesa. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we, we have done a couple, I mean, if anyone else feel free to chime in, but we have done a couple sort of like collaborations. One of them is like DMM DAO, where DMM 
I think it was 2% of their tokens are in the DXDAO. Um, another one was um, Mstable was actually doing it kind of by themselves, um, not too much collaboration. Um, and a Luna Social is a recent one that's coming up and in fairly close collaboration with DXDAO. And that means um, basically, I think helping them both in the marketing aspect of things um, and um, yeah, and the technical of how to do the sale and these type of things. Um, what was that one called, sorry? A Luna Social, A-L-U-N-A. -A. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not too much into that details of that, but if anyone else wants to chime in, feel free. Yeah, Luna's a copy trading platform. Um, and yes, they, they have some posts on Dow Talk and are planning to do their sale on Mesa. And also, um, I think the initial collaboration that we're talking about is listing on Mesa, you know, maybe some publicity support and um, they would be providing liquidity on DX swap uh, after the Mesa sale. Because what we've seen in these um, other sales is it would be great to see stuff stay around on Gnosis Protocol, but you know, trading tends to move to like the AMM style exchanges like Uniswap right. and Balancer. Why do you think that is? Why? I mean, I think just ease of use for both the liquidity provider and the trader and just, right. I think also Uniswap just has a great presence in a lot of users. So they sort of have that yeah. um, momentum. And also I think maybe the biggest, one of the bigger reasons that's really hurting Mesa for like kind of everyday trading is gas costs, especially mm. when things were getting high in the recent months. Um, you have to take a few actions on Mesa, you have to deposit and then make the trade and stuff. And Uniswap is very efficient. And so yeah. as it relates to DX now, we're about to launch uh, DX Swap. It's actually going under a brand change now, so I'm not quite sure where that name will land, but um, it's a fork of Uniswap V2, and yeah, just so that's how we're that. be cooperating uh, by kind of helping to it push, like incentivize uh, Aluna trading on on DX Swap, and something like that could be really interesting if if Colony was interested in that. Would be cool. cool. And Jack, you uh, clearly you you guys are fans of XDI since because you have Colony running on XDI. Mm -hmm. uh, and we all, DXDAO is also exploring a lot with XDAI. This seems like a scenario, and what, I don't know if you know about this, but Mesa on mainnet, they're given that there's some constraints where like, it only really makes sense if like an order is for like over $2,500. Mm. And so one idea we've been discussing is like an ID, like a, a token offering where the project would could do, could use mainnet for their larger size orders, but for all the smaller people who might want a smaller amount, could also use Mesa, which is also deployed on XDAI. So you could run two separate uh, sales, I mean, at the same time, the same prices on, on one on XDAI and one on mainnet at the same time. So you would enable a way for smaller buyers to participate because it's the, the small buys don't really work and get left out on May on Mesa on mainnet, right? So, but this could be a good good scenario for that. Yeah, I think in terms of there's a, a few technical details to work through on Mesa, and I don't know if this is probably not the venue for it, but we're happy to set up a call and kind of go through. It's basically like a checklist of things that mm -hmm. you want to keep in mind. And um, Ken, who's not on this call, is, is sort of our expert on that, and, and will help you kind of construct your sale and make sure everything's lined up. Um, on the technical side. And just to give another uh, support for DX Swap, we're now rebranding it. Um, mm -hmm. So one of the features of it is a, kind of calling it a governance enabled AMM. Um, so the kind of feature that we're, we're having is the ability to raise or lower fees and then ultimately to govern the pool. So I think it'd kind of be cool, presumably, if you guys like, you know, if the colony, you know, Meta Colony itself like managed its own like liquidity pool mm -hmm. on DX swap. Uh, initially, proposals need to come through DX DAO mm -hmm. uh, to change those, but uh, kind of that's kind of what we're hoping to do in the next couple of months is like pass that off to those. And I don't know that would be a kind of cool uh, joint governance effort in yeah. some way. Cool, that'd be fun. 
Can I ask, um, for proposals that are more controversial, where does the discussion take place? Where is it appropriate? In, in Colony, you mean, or in, or in, um, in DX DAO? Sorry? Do you mean in Colony or in DX DAO? I meant in Colony. It takes place wherever that organisation wants its, wants its discussions to take place. But I mean, there is there is this um, discussion thread that uh, that exists there in, in Colony, so it could take place there. But perhaps there's a discussion that happens elsewhere before the proposal is made. Mm -hmm. And also, is there um, any record of the voting histories? I mean, you said that yeah. you reveal your vote afterwards. Mm -hmm. Can you check someone's voting record? Yeah, I mean, it's all on chain, so it's there forever. Cool, thank you. Yeah, okay, well, thanks a lot, Jack. I think maybe the next step could probably be uh, to post on Dow Talk. Um, okay. With um, some of the stuff you want, and then maybe a, a call, to schedule a call with Ken. Um, yeah. And yeah, uh, th thanks for the time. It looks amazing. Um, thank you. And I'm, I'm personally going to try it. Good. Um. <laughs> All right. Good uh, stuff. Thanks very much. Yeah, really yeah. cool stuff. Thanks for coming on. Pleasure. Yeah. So the next topic is um, the DX swap rebrand, uh, which we briefly chatted about. Um, maybe Zet, do you want to update it on this? You're kind of championing this, I think. Yes. Um, so. Drum roll. We have. Um, we have a winner of the rebrand. So for the ones that doesn't know, we had a small process of renaming uh, the swap to something else. Um, and we did uh, we did a form where people could send in their like, uh, suggestions. And then we voted on that internally. And then we made uh, our community vote on the top three. Uh, and the winner is actually Swapper. That will be the name of DXWAP. So Swapper like this. Yep. Um, which suits like basically startups these days. Uh, and yeah, I mean, uh, anything else you want to add about specifically this? Is that? I mean, it's it's I I I'm uh, I'm happy because it it's self-explanatory uh, what it does. It's swapping and uh, also i think i'm happy because also if, if we want to put it in inside of a DeFi hub it, it could be like a, the name of that uh, sub product so it, it's a good name and anyone who uses the old name from here on out has to put 0.05 eth into a pot Ooh. what's the smart contract that's where is it going to it will be used. Uh, it will be voted on how the pot will be used by the DAO for a virtual pizza party or something. So we, uh, I'm gonna work on the rebranding. I'm gonna do some kind of logo for this, and uh, we'll uh, do some kind of announcement this week about the name. Yeah, I think it's actually really. Uh, kind of uh, maybe serendipitous how things are coming together here with uh, and a new name and a rebrand, I think are kind of a, a great opportunity to uh, introduce this to the community, to the industry with kind of a fresh, um, fresh set of eyes. And I think the way that we're going to build it out, you know, as a product development and then kind of also corresponding have a governance system that is like, uh, has to approve uh, the uh, smart contract deployer has to approve the new ENS domain name and kind of all of that happening through on-chain governance, um, I think, and then just kind of like documenting that the whole time, I think that'll kind of feed into uh, kind of building the brand, building the product as something that we iterate on and, and kind of build with the community. So uh, yeah, I think it's I'm excited to, uh, excited to get this off the ground. 
Yes for Swapper. <laughs> um, yeah, exciting stuff. Um, so I guess the last item on the agenda is kind of the XDXDAO redeployment, which is done. I can share the link here. Uh, wait in a second. Um, important to say that um, due to requests like this, um, this DAO is deployed on Arc V1, as you could see from the URL. Um, and the reason is uh, that we want to have the same, um, basically, the same code base on both um, mainnet and XDAI. Um, so yeah, it's redeployed from the la latest snapshot that was on the previous uh, XDAI DAO. Um, on, the, on the topic of the old XDAI DAO, um, there is still some locked gen in it um, for all the stakers. Uh, it will still take, like, we are now re-adding the plugin, the plugin manager that was lost, uh, that was out there in the ether. Um, so yeah, very soon everybody will be able to redeem the lost gen, uh, including myself. Um, so yeah, that's that. Um, yeah, um, I wanted to maybe talk about like the competition a bit, and I was going to share can't find the link right now. But I was going to share, um, there's a competition that's live right now for a meme competition from um, PrimeDAO, um, which is you know kind of cool. And I don't know, thoughts maybe on which first competition should be run on the XDAI DAO. Any questions about the XDAI DAO? Uh, Sky, I'm expecting you to have some questions. And yeah, I guess we can go from there. Oh, you should mention competition. Do, is there a good, can we still use the competition scheme that we had initially planned or you want, that we were thinking about using on, even though it's ARC V1 just as easily? Yeah, 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 we can. The, cool. the problem with, with the DXDAO, with this DXDAO and adding the competition, uh, like the main DXDAO is that it uses like an old version of ARC. Um, so, like v1 old version so it would be kind of complex to add it um so yeah like if you were deploying a new DAO, also deploying a DAO with schemes is far far easier than adding it to an existing DAO. so so yeah we can use the competition yeah so uh so i guess as a group we should decide we, we had initially an idea to move over some funds to fund this new DAO. Uh, obviously, we'll do some tests and stuff first, but we should probably come up with a new uh, proposal to come up with some amount of funds that we move over to this uh, to this version to use in competitions or bounties or uh, whatever it is the DAO wants to use it for. I mean, yeah. that, like, there's yeah, you need some funds to start doing something with, so. We can decide how much. Uh, maybe we'll ask, talk about it in Keybase, but we figure out what a good first amount is or something. I do think knowing what you're going to do with the money is also important too, not just like the amount. Uh, but I, I think like we could probably, I, mean, I guess, could we figure out something for Omen, uh, Swapper, and Mesa, like on XDAI even? I and mean, we were just talking a little bit about maybe using like getting the idea with Colony uh, on Mesa. I don't know if there's something we could figure out with, with Mesa there and then Omen. I don't know, we were talking about kind of some of the new markets lately, or maybe there's a competition scheme about like curation or something. I mean, a competition about curation or something, but like what are, I guess, yeah, what, what type of competitions could we do for each of the products? <laughs> um yeah so i mean these are good questions i think like i would like to start with you know just like a tiny amount and like you know you could be like even a thousand dollars and we could say we could have a competition of what, what's the D, what should be the dx dao song right because there was a discussion somewhere there and you could have it open to anyone who wants to make a submission. You know, first place wins like seven hundred dollars. Second place wins three hundred. And but just to get it going and see, like how a competition works and how you can participate. 
um, or you know something. I don't want to say silly, but you know, kind of like non, not serious. Um, so yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. We, we can we can have a, a think about this. Yeah, and uh, maybe to add another thing, Sky, to your question, um, like this XDAI DAO should not have, like it doesn't have the vault. So uh, if you're sending, you could send from the bridge, you know, obviously test this first, but sending from the bridge uh, directly to the DAO avatar should work. Um, so yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, we Yeah, we can. I guess we need to do a proposal for the small amount first, yeah, to test it. Yeah. Oh, you mean, wait, why a proposal? The funds are already in the multisig now. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess you're right. I can't remember how much there are. I think it was like there was like 10K or something. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's in the multi-sig, yeah. So, okay, so we just initiate a, a transaction across the bridge to, right, for a dollar, yep. Yeah. Try that. Yeah, and then see if that works, and all it all should work, and then we could basically start using it. Um, and, yeah, thanks, Larray, for sending the um, the uh, Prime DAO competition. No worries, uh, are you guys going to enter? <laughs> yeah, it was like $1,000 for the first winner, so. I know. I know. I think I'm going to enter as well. I'll see. I'll see which kind of memes I can come up with. Yeah. Uh, um, I was going to actually ask you guys about uh, doing some sort of like partnership with Prime. Um, I know, John. Are you on? Like, are you in Prime DAO on behalf of yourself or as a governor on behalf of DX? No, I'm not on behalf of DX now. Yeah, I, I am a part of the, the, the like initial set of people who had reputation in Prime DAO. Okay. <laughs> I've been helping out a little bit with uh, the guy helped took them up with an audit. And, um, yeah. But yeah, not as part of DX now or, or on behalf of DX now. Does anyone does like DX now as a whole want to come over as a like ecosystem partner that would be you know governing on behalf of DX now? would be one kind of partnership idea there's like token swap idea like api3 put out um if anyone has any like ideas on that or if you guys think about well i happens. definitely think yeah <clears throat> i mean i think the similar to what um we were talking to colony about um and mm -hmm. i think prime that would be another great one to obviously working together on like the the mesa component um but then mm -hmm. figuring out on uh, swapper yeah. Um, and so I don't know if there's a, to me, it's kind of a similar alignment of interest in like, how can we figure out where there's overlap? Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, just so that we have like, we can have like a joint announcement similar to what API three put out, like they are promoting like Dow to Dow relations, um, which is really cool. Um, so yeah. If there's any ideas, just send them my way and we can talk about it on another call. <laughs> Don't let your memes be dreams. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think it would be good if Prime Down and DX at least talk to each other about, you know, what their plans are, because it seems like there's some similar kind of goals and ambitions between the two. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Did I don't you guys know. Yeah. Set up another call. Yeah, might not might not hurt. I, I don't know about like maybe this idea of like an ambassador. We I mean, we've talked about this before, right? Like I think Sky, you were even talking about DMM. Um, I have some info on the ambassador stuff, so like it would be, yeah, it would be similar to an ambassador role. If that's it would be just like a member from DX DAO coming over. And on behalf of DX DAO, so like right now I'm talking with Vega and um, having them come on as a ecosystem partner, but it would just be like an ambassador. 
I think it might be an interesting model to have TX Dial like ambassadors to other projects. And I mean, I don't know if the workload has to be that high. It could be relatively light, you know, like a part-time, like one one day a week kind of thing where they're keeping up on whatever project and making sure that you know, yeah. TX now is cognizant of whatever is, you know, I mean, Colony is maybe a good example, Aluna, Prime DAO, DMM, the like projects that we are, you know, have done something with or I don't know. I mean, finding some way that we can add structure to that or scale that. I mean, I think that's interesting. I'm just kind of talking off the top of my head. Though. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, any ideas? Just send them my way. Yeah. That, that type of those type of external relationships makes a lot of sense. The, the, I think part of the reason they haven't gained a lot of traction in the scenarios where we could have them is because once you have that interchange relationship because the DAOs can't like take action to at this point because of the technical integrations like there's no actions that the the DAO can take on behalf of these you know partnerships and relationships it's really mm -hmm. following along rather than oh oh there's a big vote happening in the uh you know this ecosystem let's get the community DX DAO community's opinion on it and then that's going to lead to DXDAO taking an action on the vote in that other community. That'd be really cool. And I feel like you would want someone to communicate all of that information so that the, the, the group can, you know, do a proposal and take a decision on that point, on that point, and then actually take action on it. And without the ability to take any action between these communities, it becomes less interesting to people. I think that like, people aren't paying as much attention. So hopefully as these things progress, they'll be able to, DAOs will be able to actually interact with each other and maybe Colony or Prime DAO and these guys will be good examples of that. Cause that's yeah. much cooler, yeah. Yeah, that is much cooler. And then I also have some updates from the status uh, partnership. Simona actually sent, um, the video i don't know sky if you took a look at it but she had said to me uh there's a little bit of work that needs to be done regarding the mobile optimi optimization on the element side so i don't know if it's like geared up for mobile but um yeah, she sent us a video recording if anyone wants it uh drop your emails to me and i can forward it to you in the chat or whichever I think Geronimo may have dropped off the call, but I would ping Geronimo or, or the Omen chat key base about that. I think that's, hey. yeah, that's definitely interesting. Yeah. The, uh, related to that, like Omen works on mobile and it, it works in MetaMask and status web three browsers. It may not be as optimized as it could be. Uh, the bigger issue, which was Rails like didn't even work on status and federico has made some updates and some changes it's not live net on it's not live on rails.e it's on like the test uh url right now but okay. there's a new there's a new way to inject web3 into dApps i guess and i think the whole space is moving that way it's called windows ethereum and so we want to make sure that all of uh dx DAO's dApps have this ability since that's the way the space is going and now rails well I'm, we're going to test the test version that he made but rails should work on on the status browser now as well and so we will test that and we'll test omen and the whether like it's mobile optimized at the same time and we can always make these better because i you know some people actually around the world like only interact with web3 from their phones like people a lot of people don't use computers and so i agree that just like the the regular internet went mobile like web3 is probably also going to go mobile so everything needs to be accessible from your from your phone and so that's why the status partnership and is is a is a good one i think but we yeah we got to do a bunch of testing I have the first blog post ready. I'm just gonna finish up editing it and so I'll forward it to you after. Great. Yep, super exciting.
Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Anything else? Just a shout out to Omen over the last week because it had like a big week since the last DX to biz dev call. So yeah, great work there. Yeah, and it seems like I just had a look. It seems like people are arguing that the market should be invalid because it didn't resolve by that date, which is interesting. <laughs> which may, you know, be what Omen is trying to do, reflect the state of the world. <laughs> There are a couple of things I think I'd like to just bring up for maybe we could uh, get on the agenda for next time. Um, yeah. One is I had a call with the Fuse team, Fuse that I owe. Um, and so, you know, they they are still interested in some kind of, you know, kind of like Larray's talking about some kind of a DAO to DAO, or I guess they're not a DAO, a DAO like a, a relationship between DXDAO and their project. Um, they're also interested in like a token swap and stuff. So maybe we could kind of just put a little, a little time on the agenda f next week for that. Um, and would, would you guys be like down to do kind of like a manual? Like we could be the kind of like pioneers of this DAO to DAO relations, how they interact and like what it means, because I know a lot of them aren't gonna actually make sense uh, technically, but in the future, I think in order to grow this decentralized world, we have to have some sort of like cooperative between DAOs. Yeah, I, think, I mean, like, if we can add some structure to that, and, and yeah, I mean, I like that yeah. idea. Because we've sort of been, we've been talking about it for a long time, like this idea of governance as a service, DMM, but it's really not materialized with DMM yet. I mean, I think mostly we have other priorities that have been the focus, but yeah, I mean, some somehow establishing how these relationships work would be, I think, really cool. Um, I've actually, yeah. Just for this topic, I've actually, like I sat down with Oren and we spec'd out what um, basically a DAO calling a balance of a few DAOs looks like. So like one DAO could have reputation in another DAO. Um, and it's, I don't want to say it's very straightforward, but this could work. Um, um, and it's not that complex. Uh, you know, you know the, the, the problems are in the edge cases and where, you know, if someone could, could manipulate it, um, but yeah, I to, I totally think this is this is really what we need, and having yeah basically the style vote in prime DAO and back and forth, and this is by the way individual voting. It's not the whole DAO voting as a as its a whole a whole entity. It's each person getting the proportion of his reputation in the other DAO, basically. That makes sense. Yeah, that was going to be my kind of question or comment that I think those are very different things. If you give reputation in one DAO to the individual addresses for that hold reputation in another DAO versus DX DAO itself as an entity, reputation, yeah, as an entity owning owning like reputation in another one, um, and like I guess. With tokens, it's one thing because they're liquid and they can kind of like go back and forth and we think of that. But with obviously reputation, that's something that, you know, as you say, is non-transferable. So uh, I'm more just thinking about like what are the, what's the design implications of either of those, right? Like why would you, like what would it mean for like a DAO to have reputation in another DAO? Yeah. Uh, all... Yeah, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I'm, just, I'm, just to tease I'm something else, because I tried to get this on the agenda last time, and you know, as sometimes happens, you know, just other stuff kind of took up the time. But I think there's like this big issue that we need to address as a DAO, which is uh, product strategy. And oh, yeah. and it came up a little bit on the last DX swap call, but I think really we need to address it more kind of broadly. Um, and I feel like either the biz dev or the governance call are, are probably a good place to start to, to try to yeah. unpack I, that a little bit. I, I will say that I think this is this is like just strategy in general is something that's, uh, I don't want to say the hardest, but it's something that's fairly complex for a decentralized organization because like how could you set up a strategy when you're a decentralized organization and at any point this could change, right? Um, so yeah, just something to think about. 
Um, yeah, and I think that is one of the big questions is, you know, do we have a product strategy? And if so, like, how do we res achieve consensus on what that should be? Yeah. I mean, I think uh, Swapper is kind of a, is going to be some example or precedent for that because, uh, you know, obviously that has a storied history and you can go back, going back to the forum several months. Um, but I, I think that's been iterated on and just, we've, we've definitely moved in lots of different directions. Now we have a, a new name. Um, so I, I don't know if that's how all products will kind of go forward. And then the question is like, how do we continue to iterate on a product? Like once it's after it's launched, uh, but I think like figuring out the inputs and the, or like the, yeah, how we kind of have inputs to our equation to make sure that we're